Okay, so now I want to talk about the physical <clears throat> layout of the experiment. We just talked about conceptual layout. Um, why am I putting this in separate videos? I'm not sure. I just thought it might be a really long video if I talked about all three at once, so I'm separating them. Um, so physical layout is um, where and how you're going to spatially array all the individuals in your study. And it's not intended to be a, a, a map or even a a concept diagram of your experiment. It's intended to be um, de to depict the actual uh, physical layout. So uh, I think the best way to do it is to actually take that same last experiment where I have a reciprocal transplant study going on um, and I have all possible populations being placed in all possible environments. There's just a two by two, but <clears throat> um, so, so let's say we have um, uh, three environments just like the last case and I want to show the physical layout so I have environment one environment two and environment three now this isn't showing that they're on a slope or anything so it's not the conceptual layout it's not supposed to depict <clears throat> kind of a beautiful picture how things are happening <clears throat> but instead where I'm going to <clears throat> put my transplants so I'm going to draw randomly located blocks and kind of position them randomly and put these partitions between the environments showing that they're in separate places. <clears throat> and I'm again just showing randomly located blocks. So obviously block is going to be a random factor. So I have block uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That clearly shows I have nine different blocks in three different environments. And then within those blocks, what I would typically do is I wouldn't show the detail in every block, but I would blow up one of them to show the detail. Okay, so within these blocks, I'm going to plant individuals from my three populations, right? Because I'm doing a reciprocal transplant experiment. So I want to show that I am randomly placing those individuals uh, within the block. And I want to actually show the number of individuals I'm going to have uh, for each of the uh, ecotypes here or populations that I'm transplanting. And I want to show that they are random Etc. So, you know, this is showing an eight, perhaps by eight. Oops, three, one, two. Um, there are a number of ways I could show that it's eight by eight, but basically I'm showing that I have 64 individuals, uh, e evenly spaced, but randomly allocated to position within blocks. <clears throat> okay, and so this is showing everything about how I am laying out these individuals. Now, um, just uh, to revisit one of the principles I talked about in class, the Mausack principle, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? If I was doing this reciprocal transplant, even with this one conceptual layout I've described here, um, there are many ways I could do it. I could, for example, have one block in each environment and have more replicates in that block. Okay, then I wouldn't really even, block wouldn't be a factor because I have no replication within environments. But if I have multiple blocks, then block becomes a factor that I have to include in my analysis. I could also have blocks have only one ecotype in them or one population in them, and I could have replicates. So I could have like four blocks within each environment, two of which are type one, two of which are type two. To have minimum replication, I guess with three environments, I'd need six blocks, right? I'd have two blocks of type three as well, all randomly located. So population would be randomly allocated uh, to each of the blocks, but I'd have two of each um, type. So you can see that there are many ways I could lay out this experiment. In fact, we'll get some practice with that in class. Um, so it's clear from this design that I have block as a factor environment as a factor, and population as a factor. And in fact, I need this physical layout and a really clear depiction of it in order to produce the next step, 
which is the statistical layout. So the statistical layout is what's going to help me understand the relationship among variables so that I can set up my effects and my model tests. Okay? But the physical layout, uh, actually drawing this out, can really help your reader understand exactly what you did and whether you actually end up publishing the physical layout of your experiment or not, it's really good to draw it out to help you as a step toward understanding the statistical layout of your experiment. Okay, so I recommend it with virtually all experiments that have more than, more than one factor so that you can easily see the relationship among variables, independent variables, in your experiment. Okay. By the way, how many independent variables do we have here? We have three, right? We have population, environment, and block. And so understanding the relationship between those is going to determine our statistical model. So that's our next step is uh, understanding the relationship of the physical layout to the statistical layout of this experiment. All right, so that's key. Next video.